Injury with CPR Instructor Affiliates powered by Prime Medical Training. Today we're going to be talking about determining your market position. Now, what does that mean? When we talk about market position, there's a few things that we're taking into consideration. One is defining what your market is, um, how large of a market are you going to serve. So uh, are you just going to be in your city? Are you going to try to be more regional and cover like, you know, the, the southern part of your state? Um, are you going to try to go after multiple states? Uh, obviously, it's best to start small um, and really hone your craft and understand your business model before scaling. But uh, you've got to determine what your primary sphere is going to be for your market. Um, in general, I think that a 50 mile radius or about an hour radius is an ideal starting place for most people. Um, and, and that's going to be realistic from a logistics standpoint and also for people that are wanting to travel to you to take classes, if you offer public classes. Um, an hour is usually about the max that people will travel. Um, beyond that, there's usually somebody else that's gonna be closer um, or they'll They'll search out other means of, of getting their training. So define your geographic market and figure that out um, and know what that market is and what it isn't. Um, and you have to be prepared sometimes to say, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to do that kind of business. Now, if you're just starting out um, and somebody contacts you and they're two hours away, you might be more inclined to drive out there and do that. And, and that's okay. I understand I was there and you know, any dollar, um, you'll chase that because you have the time and it's worth it. But as you get bigger and busier, um, that class, that small class that's two hours away just isn't worth the money anymore. Um, but either way, we're talking about focusing your marketing efforts and focusing your um, growth within that hour radius. Okay, so it's okay to travel outside of that, but don't be you know, uh, spending ads in another city that you're not, you know, that's two hours away. Focus it in. The other thing that you're gonna have to determine is who are your clients going to be? You know, what market share do you want? Not everybody is a client or a potential client. Yes, everybody should learn CPR. Um, everybody can learn CPR, but that doesn't mean that those are your potential clients. Um, potential clients are going to be more specific and honed in. And in this case, in our industry, it's primarily people that are regulated to have training. So uh, it could be a doctor's office, industrial space, um, certain recreational departments uh, and, and places like that. Those for sure are going to be your clients. But is every healthcare worker a potential client? No. Some healthcare workers work at a hospital and their training is provided for them by the hospital and uh, they have their own in-house trainers. So they're not really potential clients. So you got to nix them out of the equation. Um, we're looking for usually, uh, especially if you're starting out, you're looking for the small to medium sized businesses that are regulated. If they're any bigger than that and they're a large industry like a hospital or something, um, or even a really large manufacturing plant, um, they're gonna have their own in-house trainers to take care of things. So it's the small to medium size that it's not worth it to have an in-house trainer, so they outsource it to companies like yourself. So that's important to define that, um, but there's other people too that are require, that, that are interested in having CPR training um, and are prone to call you, churches, attorney's offices, um, campgrounds most of these places are not required in most states to have the training and yet they have a sense of obligation a desire to want to um, to have that training and be prepared because they serve a population or they see a lot of foot traffic coming through their organization and they recognize that there's there is potential that something like that can happen and they want to be prepared and that's great so those are clients as well but they're different types of clients so it's not only important to know who is and who isn't a potential client, but it's also important to understand the nuances between the different types of clients. So a healthcare worker, their main objective is to get that CPR card so that they can go back to work. 
The church, however, they're not regulated. They don't care about the CPR card. They care about actually being able to save somebody's life, to be able to um, be empowered with knowledge and, uh, and, and take action if needed. And so when you're talking to these people, um, your language and the things that you talk about with them about your services that you provide are gonna be different. Now, are you gonna provide the same quality, the same standard class, the same format as, as you would to a healthcare provider in a church? I would hope so, but it needs, but when you're talking to them, you need to recognize that every person has different interests at heart and you need to understand what those differences are um, and then speak to those interests when you're, when you're communicating your services to them. <clears throat> Um, lastly, you, when you're looking at your market position, you're also taking into consideration the competition. So again, not everybody who teaches CPR is a competitor. It's just like somebody saying, um, somebody like a high-end bike company, um, looking at Walmart and saying that Walmart's their competitor. It, it is not. The Walmart people who buy bikes at Walmart are a totally different clientele than people who spend 10 to $15,000 on a bike for competition, right? And, and, and neither Walmart nor the high-end bike store are going to look at each other as competition. And same goes for the CPR industry. You really shouldn't be looking at, you know, a college that offers a CPR class as competition. That's not their bread and butter. That's not what they do all day and day in and day out. They're not hardcore advertising and marketing their services. Um, it, it's really generally a community college. It's a service to their students and who might be in their nursing program or paramedic program. Um, or, you know, it's just, it's just a passive thing. They, they have it there for the community. They offer one or two classes a month, but it is not their main driver, right? There's, they, they're focused on larger um, educational programs hospital. Yes, just because a hospital teaches it in-house, that doesn't mean that they're a competitor. Again, they're primarily focused with teaching their employees. They're not, their primary focus, even though they might teach people outside in the community, that's not their primary focus, nor what they do day in and day out like you are. So it's, it's important not to get bent out of shape about these seeming competitors uh, and to really focus in on those who are actually your competitors, other people who run businesses like yourself, that are entrepreneurs, that are that are marketing the, their services, that are solely focused on CPR, or at least you know a vast majority of their services are, are CPR training or ACLS training, whatever. Um, those are your competitors. Those are the people that you need to keep an eye on and have a pulse on and, and understand what they're doing. And, uh, and, and then making decisions based on that. Um, I will say really quick, I don't believe and I don't suggest that you eye your competitors' websites every single day. Um, and I don't think that you should make business decisions based on your competitors because a lot of times, um, you a lot of times, one, competitors don't know what they're doing. And so you're reacting to something that they're doing that might not even be a, a good business practice. Like you need to go and read books about good business practices and then make decisions for your company based on what you believe is the best for your business, not what you think is going to help you, um, you know, one up your competitor. So I just say that as a, as a caveat and, um, and also, you know, uh, it's just important for you to stay focused on your business and not be distracted or put undue stress on yourself by looking at other people's businesses and websites. Um, it doesn't really help at all. Uh, it's important to know what your competition is doing in general, like, oh, okay, I know that they offer a few classes a week or this is the price point. I mean, that's, that's part of when you're doing an analysis and you're trying to um, figure out what's in your area. You need to know what's in your area but I wouldn't spend a lot of time dwelling and I definitely wouldn't spend time reacting and making business decisions just solely based on, oh, they do this, so I'm gonna do this. 
anyway, that's market position. Figure out your geography. An hour radius really is a great place to start. And then if you want to expand from there, there's a whole set of other things that you're going to have to take into consideration. Then you also need to figure out, um, you know, who your competition is. And then you also need to figure out who your potential clients are and the different nuances in those clients and what they're looking for and building, um, a, building a sales pitch, building a marketing strategy that targets the different nuanced categories of your um, potential clients and target market. If you have questions, if you have things that you'd like to add, please leave them in the comments below. And we would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, CPR Instructor Affiliates, uh, where we post other helpful insights into how to run and grow a CPR business. We'll do product reviews and other things like that. Uh, and so we would love to engage with you. And if there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. This is Andrew with CPR Instructor Affiliates. We'll talk to you next time.